I think the dose that this patient had received, uh, being 500 milligrams initially, one tablet, and it's actually remarkable that it did uh, result in symptom control. So um, in a way, I'm not surprised that the dose had to be taken up to 1,000 milligrams. And, and frankly, if um, you wanted to um, uh, exactly uh, assess or categorize uh, the response to 1,000 milligrams of hydrea, even if it were to be suboptimal, you could argue that it may be because the dose wasn't sufficient. Because again, let's remember the guidelines for hydrea resistance demand that the patient needs to be taking at least two grams of hydrea uh, for at least three months without any optimization of the hematological, without, without any optimization of their hematological parameters, in which case you can state that, well, maybe you have a patient that has actually developed hydrea resistance. But if she hasn't even taken 1,000 milligrams or even 1,500, then it would be hard to uh, argue or make a case for resistance to hydrea. So I would probably increase the dose and then see how is the patient tolerating the higher dose. It's uh, possible that they may develop intolerance, in which case you try to control the symptoms, you're trying to optimize the hematocrit to reduce the risk of thrombotic events, but then your patient develops heme toxicity, in which case you, have, you are forced to interrupt the dose because you want to prevent um, you know, symptoms or consequences of uh, things like um, you know, neutropenia, et cetera. Um, so then it becomes um, an issue of tolerability. Whether or not the increased need for phlebotomy can be associated with um, a worse outcome actually was not uh, clear up until a recent study that looked at patients who required greater than three phlebotomies in a year time, and uh, they demonstrated that those patients had a worse outcome, actually. So I think this needs to be looked into in a prospective fashion to actually um, get confirmation that people who do have increased rate of phlebotomy do have a worse outcome ultimately. All we have is, to some extent, retrospective data from Alvarez Loran, who uh, looked at um, uh, basically um, patients who met the criteria for uh, resistance and intolerance and demonstrated that lack of response is associated with um, poor survival and higher chance of um, transformation. But when it comes to phlebotomy itself, I think there is a suggestion that it may be associated with worse outcome, but we don't have concrete data. Uh, nonetheless, uh, there is data relative to thrombosis. So if you want to reduce the chances of thrombosis, then it would be important to keep the hematocrit below 45%. But I think the question about you know, frequency of phlebotomy is still out there. I think that monitoring the iron parameters is extremely important, especially when you are dealing with someone who has a high phlebotomy need. I mean, the whole idea of phlebotomy is so that you would make a patient iron deficient to the point where they cannot um, make hemoglobin, basically, and their hematocrit, therefore, is well controlled. And therefore, when I have a patient who all of a sudden decided to have high hematocrits, other than the fact that we discuss compliance with the medication, I also check their iron uh, stores because it may very well be that they need to be phlebotomized so that you can optimize their or be, make them iron deficient again. Again, there's some suggestion that making patients iron deficient may by itself create a whole set of you know, new symptoms akin to what patients with iron deficiency develop. But um, that's a, a topic for a different discussion. So I do check their iron parameters, but I think um, another extension, or I should say an, um, an element to this, is what are their other counts doing? Do they have evidence of myeloproliferation? Is their white count increasing? Because let's face it, uh, phlebotomy is not gonna optimize a high white count. So I think as physicians, we need to evaluate the extent of myeloproliferation, not just elevation of the hematocrit in this patient population, and determine whether higher cytoreduction or just simply phlebotomy would be sufficient for those patients.